All right, open your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I want to read the first 14 verses. The title of the message this morning is The Christmas Story. The Christmas Story. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. The Bible says it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that <clears throat> all the world should be registered. This census first took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth... Peace, goodwill towards men. Our Father God, we thank you this morning that we can come here today uh, to be here as a group, Lord, that wants uh, to very much please you. And Father, as you walk amongst us today, I pray that you would be pleased, that everything we say and do might uplift and glorify our Heavenly Father. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, guide and direct the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The birth of Jesus Christ drew Mary and Joseph, as you see in our text, to the town called Bethlehem. Augustus Caesar at this time was ruling, but God was in charge. Never forget that. He thought he was ruling, but God's the one who's in charge of the whole story here. Amen. You need to realize that today. And so what happened here? God used Caesar's edict to move Mary and Joseph 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem to fulfill prophecy that day. When Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word, it meant that from then on, from then on, her life would be part of the fulfillment of divine prophecy. God is going to use her to fulfill the prophecy that he had ordered. As a matter of fact, as we all know, uh, God promised Jesus would be human, and he did. He was not an angel. Jesus uh, was a Jew. He was not a Gentile. Jesus would come from the tribe of Judah. Jesus would come from the family of David, born of a virgin in Bethlehem. This is all prophesied according to the word of God that got fulfilled that day. All of this occurred just as the scripture says. And what's interesting about this story this morning is that Caesar unknowingly played a major part in that prophecy. He didn't know what was going on. He was just ruling as king. But see, he didn't recognize that God was in control here. And so if God's word controls our lives, then the events of history only help us to fulfill the will of God in our lives also. Amen? Amen. I want us to notice a few things this morning. Number one, notice the place of Christ's birth. Notice the place of Christ's birth. birth. In verses 2 through 4, notice the journey, verses 2 and 3. In that journey, there was a census, according to verse number 2. The Bible says in verse 2, the census first took place while uh, Quirinius was governing Syria. There was a census. This was a legal, royal uh, ordinance that was sent to all the people. All people were required 
uh, to, to register and every town, every human being had to register by law. Rome took a census every 14 years for both military and also for tax purposes and each Jewish male had to return to the city of his father to record his name, his occupation, and property and family. That was a must. They had to do that. And since uh, Joseph and Mary lived in another town, he had to go back to Bethlehem to register where he was born. And so there was a census taken. And I want you to notice there was a city also in verses 3 and 4. Joseph and Mary would leave the city of Nazareth and go to a small town in Galilee, the home of Jesus for 30 years until he was registered. That had to be fulfilled. And so that journey uh, was a long journey. Uh, it was a journey that had to be taken because prophecy had to be fulfilled. And notice here the registering in verses 5 and 6. It's very interesting. The Bible says, To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. I want you to notice this registering. Mary and Joseph were already husband and wife, but since they did not consummate the marriage until after Jesus was born, she was called his espoused wife in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 through 25. And so it had to be done. The journey ha was very trying to her. She was, but she was rejoicing knowing that she was doing God's will. She knew the child within her womb was going to be the Son of God. She knew that. And so she did not mind doing God's will. And so it was pleasing to her, very pleasing to her. I want you to notice something in verse number 6 and 7. Notice the releasing here. The registering is done. Now you see the releasing time in verse 6 and 7. Now ready for the delivery, the baby Jesus. They had to find a place to say, stay and a place to settle in. A place to, to, to stay and settle in. Here's the point I want you to understand this morning. When they got to town, there was no room. There was no room at the local motel. He went everywhere trying to find a place where his wife could deliver the baby. Couldn't find any place at all. When he came to the owner of the, of the hotel that day, that owner did not recognize that he was saying no to God. Saying no room for the Son of God. No room, sorry. Hmm. Got to thinking about that. That he had refused God's Son that day. You realize that? He said no to God. You know, this is the time of Christmas season, right? Have you refused Jesus? Will you refuse Jesus this season? Will you let another Christmas season go by without taking Jesus Christ into your heart? Are you going to say no to Jesus this Christmas season? Like the motel owner? Have you said no to God this morning? Are you part of the rejection crowd? See, this owner rejected Jesus Christ that day. He refused to give a room for the Son of God to be born. He was part of the rejection crowd. He was part of the crowd that said no to Jesus. Are you part of that crowd this morning? That says no to Jesus? Look at Matthew chapter 8 and verse 34 with me. Turn over there a minute. Look at Matthew chapter 8 and notice verse 34. The Bible says, And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. 
I, can you put yourself in that place? Here was uh, two 